Welcome to Copper State Treasures. Today we're going to uh, show a side-by-side -side comparison between two direct competitors from early 1928. I wanted to kind of show you mainly the 28 Chevy. And it's not often that you get these two cars side by side. Um, everybody's heard of the Ford Model A. They recognize it. The 28 Chevy was a really special, unique car. Uh, it was really only a one-year car, but it was the direct competitor to the Ford Model A. They sold almost twice as many of these 28 Chevys as the Model A. 1928, so Chevy was definitely beat Ford that A lot year. of similarities. If you drive this car and drive that car, it's a three-speed shift, clutch, uh, controls are very similar, they're four-wheel mechanical brakes, they feel pretty much the same car. There's a reason why this car didn't really win out as far as popularity for restorers and people wanting to keep it. Number one, uh, the body's wood. Yeah, so looking down here, just open the doors up here, the subrail, it's all wood. And then there's these metal panels that are nailed or tacked to it. Um, the doors, inside the doors, it's all wood with little metals tacked to it. Uh, the frames, the top, just solid wood, so it didn't um, didn't survive the elements as well as the Ford Model A all steel body. There is some wood in the Model A, but it's for tack strips. Uh, oh, and <laughs> wooden steering wheel. On the uh, instrument panel here, uh, it's a little fancier than the Model A. You have your lighting switch on the um, on the instrument panel instead of the steering wheel. Uh, you've got a full speedometer. Uh, you have your ignition. Uh, you have your choke. Uh, oil pressure in ammeter. Uh, so it's a little upgraded, a little fancier than the Ford. Uh, down here on the the pedal arrangement, it's very similar. You have your foot feet accelerator, which is <laughs> disconnected. I have the carburetor out of the car right now. Your start start button, and of course, a, a floorboard heater, a brake, and then your shifter. Just as an anti-theft device, uh, the Chevy had a steering column lock. Uh, there's this key here, and then there's a, a lever here so you can lock the steering column, lock this lever where it won't open and close, and then you can't horn. You have your uh, throttle, that's your throttle minimum, and then you have your spark advance. That's very similar to the Model A Ford other than it's reversed. <laughs> Model A has the throttle on this side and the spark on that side. Uh, Model A has the uh, windshield that tilts out, so you have front ventilation coming in. Uh, this has a, uh, uh, a crank, so this window cranks up a oh, two or three inch dome light switch. So you have your dome light and switch and off on switch on the dome light. And the itself. cranks are, the windows are kind of interesting. They're just these. <laughs> that's that's your sound for a horror film right there. Of course, it cranks down on both sides, and there would have been a um, a curtain for the back window. Solid curtain for that back window. Neat features to this car. Um, you've got the transmission opened up here. We've got the front seats out, uh, which are adjustable. You can move these brackets around to adjust the front seats. There's even a a turn crank here to move that front seat back and forth. The doors are much wider than the Model A. They're probably a good, oh, I don't know, six inches the transmissions wide. are very similar though, uh, with the exception um, the throw out bearing for the clutch in this car is um, made of graphite. It's a, it's a ring, so thick, yay round, and it's graphite. 
and after wear, the thing just breaks apart, and you have a, a big job to open up that uh, that that pressure plate area there to uh, replace the throwout bearing. The Model A has a, a real bearing. It's Model A transmissions much easier to service and get into. Though this is a this is a really good transmission, and of course um, <clears throat> the battery goes right in here in this box. Same place as the Ford Model A. Um, the motor mounts, this transmission mount here, it's very similar to um, uh, the Model A mount with the frame. So a lot of similarities between the cars. Six volt negative ground as opposed to the Ford, which is a positive ground. Um, I've stripped off the uh, intake manifold here. Uh, and the carburetor, that's being soaked right now. And then the starter's out of the car there. That's where the starter would go. So there's your linkage for the, the foot feed accelerator. Here's your generator. And the water pump's off being rebuilt right now. Um, you'll notice this compartment's pretty long. And then the engine's really short. They lengthen the 28 Chevy from the 27, an extra, oh, I don't know, there's probably an extra 10 or 11 inches here because they were working on the Chevy six cylinder. Her 19th mm -hmm. car was made to put that big long six cylinder engine in it. Uh, for 1929, they just upgraded this engine from 26 or 27, so we put out 35 horsepower, but it's basically the same engine they had been using for a few years. Uh, it's overhead valve. Uh, it's, you see these rocker arms and valves here. Uh, this one's getting a new head. Uh, we've got a new head for it. It's all clean. This one has a crack in the uh, water jacket here. Uh, all these old engines, Ford, Chevy, you name it, um, they get cracks in the water jackets and you have to pull them out, pull them down, repair them. Chevy oiling system is quite a bit different from the Ford. Um, there's an oil pump down underneath here. And then this is an oil distributor. Um, it distributes oil around the engine to different points, everywhere except for the valves. <laughs> There's no oiling on these valves. That's why you have this valve cover that sits on top of the valves. Sorry, this is kind of messy. <clears throat> and then you direct oil it through these four holes. Um, you want to make sure that pad is oil soaked and then you always just keep adding oil on there to oil that top end. Um, one other really cool feature that Chevy had is this tube here. Uh, I wish I had the carburetor to show you. This feeds into the into the inlet of the carburetor and it comes from the crankcase. So it created a, a vacuum that sucked uh, gases from the crankcase into the carburetor to be burned in the engine. So it was an early positive crankcase ventilation. It was for fuel efficiency. We'll look at the other side of the engine. There's this tube here that comes around. That's your air intake to the carburetor. And that comes off of an air filter on the other side. In fact, I'll... I'll show that. Um, oil filler tube, your dipsticks right there. That's the same as the Model A Ford. Right, right on the same side. Here's your, um, your air filter. Uh, air gets sucked in through here on the back side and it spins the air around and it causes dust particles to be slung out away from the air. And then it goes down through the center of the canister. The air is heated on the exhaust, uh, the exhaust outlet here. And then it goes through this tube to the intake of the uh, carburetor. Um, it's got 
more of a modern looking distributor teeny little thing on the side um, little condenser uh, this is an original coil here but on this car uh, it was running with this aftermarket uh, ignition coil here this here this canister here that's an oil filter so the distributor pumps the oil through this canister and it just picks up all the sludge and the, the, the carbon, the burnt stuff that uh, gets down into the crankcase. Um, these covers come off and you have these <laughs> lifters around the bottom and there's the really long rods that come up to the rocker arms and then you have your adjusters right there so you can take out all the, the clacking and so forth. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, 35 horsepower compared to Ford Model A's 40 horsepower. Uh, this car weighs probably about a 100, 150 pounds more than the Model A because it's it's a little bit bigger. Uh, you know, what? I'll have to look at the wheelbase. I think they're both about a 107 inch wheelbase, uh, but it's the, the wood uh, weighs a lot. This body weighs a lot more than the Model A body. So that with the extra horsepower. Um, that kind of helped this car fall a little more into disfavor compared to the Ford. Um, in 29, they came out with the six cylinder with basically the same body, and it was an amazing car, the Chevy Six. Uh, one big problem for restorers is these headlight rings, the tail light uh, bezel, and this is all aluminum. Uh, it's very, very pricey to replace if you can find them. They're not reproduced. Uh, almost every part on the Model A is reproduced. Uh, this car is very hard to find parts for. Um, another major difference is the suspension. On the 28 Chevy, luckily I, I pulled the bumpers off the front and back. Um, this has... Uh, four leaf springs. There's a leaf spring here, the other side, and then two in the rear. Whereas the Ford has two leaf springs. There's one here that goes all the way across. And, oh, you know, we can see it on the Model T better. The Fords did these transverse leaf springs so it's just one spring that goes across and it makes the cars kind of twist and bounce all over the place they take rough roads really well and the Chevy has <clears throat> there's the two big leaf springs in the rear uh, I pulled the fuel tank out of this fuel gauge on this car was right here <laughs> it was on top of the gas tank and uh, the Model A has the gas tank in the cowl. And then the fuel gauge is in the instrument panel. Fords, I mean, like the Model T, before this came out, you had to pull up the front seat and fill the gas underneath the front seat. Until 26, 27, and they moved it up here. It was better fuel pressure because it brought the gas tank above the carburetor higher. Whereas on the Model T, the gas tank's really down low. You're sitting on top of it, and the carburetor's not that much further beneath it. This one, you're sitting way below the gas. In fact, if you sit in this car compared to that car, in the Model T, you're looking at the top of this car as you sit up so high. And in this car, it's more like a normal... It's like it's like an um, SUV. The other thing you'll notice is most of these came out with these disc wheels, which are... When you have these lug nuts, you have that tire balanced right, you balance it by, by you know messing around with these lug nuts they run really nice uh, same as the the Ford wire wheels 
so you didn't have to mess with the wood wheels anymore. Though they did have wood wheel lock, lock right there that you can't turn the handle. And then your your key entries on the passenger side. So this is exactly the same as the Model A. You have your key entry and there's no door lock. So if you look inside the model. You notice how short this is? It's a lot harder to get into this car. The Chevy feels more luxurious when you're driving it, when you're riding in it. Um, and then you have that same little switch type thing. Um, of course, uh, it was different body manufacturers, but they used a lot of the same ideas, the same technology. Bumpers are very similar. Uh, you have brackets that come out and support uh, a metal bumper attached out front here. And same thing in the rear, you have the little brackets and it comes out. Uh, one feature I really like on the Chevy that Ford didn't have are these cowl lights. Turn signals, they're just parking light. There's, there's a switch option on the dash. You can turn on those cowl lights. And uh, none of them came with turn these aftermarket turn signals. They just Cars didn't. had stop lights. So there's your yeah. stop light, and that's all you had. It's so you turn your headlights on. Uh, the bottom one lights up, and it lights up the license plate. And when you put on the brakes, this one lights up. Um, the Chevy tire carrier and the tail lights right in the center is actually probably a better position for a stoplight right in the middle. Uh, it's interesting what in the 80s or 90s they came out with that third brake light and they started putting brake lights up on the um, These windows pop out. In the Model T, but not, not as much, and that'll go way out there. The difference is uh, Model A has the, uh, this one, the 28, has the electric windshield wiper. And the uh, 28 Chevy has a vacuum windshield wiper. The wiper blades off of there, but this is a vacuum pump. Uh, there's a vacuum tap that goes down to... It goes uh, down to here. It goes to uh, the intake. It's a little valve you turn down here to turn on the You vacuum. can't see if the intake manifold's off. But there's a tap for the windshield wiper, and then there's a tap for this. So this is the fuel pump here. It's a vacuum fuel pump. It literally it sucks up the gas from the rear. It fills a tank here, and then it gravity feeds into the curb. If necessary, it's there's your gas tank fuel filter, and it just boom right into the curb. So there's no overhead valves. Um, the adjustments, you know, underneath the valve cover, the intake and the exhaust are all on the same side. Um, there's no, um, there's no oil filter on these. Uh, just a little bit simpler, actually a lot simpler. And uh, everything's really easy to get to. Uh, carburetor is super easy to pull off and replace. Uh, distributor is really easy to pull off and replace. Uh, when I started working on this car, I was shocked at how easy it was compared to the Model T and the 28 Chevy, just for serviceability. And it gets about 24 miles to one more thing. The horn's right here. It's in, inside the engine compartment. And on the Model A, it's external. Oh. Yeah, just hanging right out there. So you can imagine somebody's going to hear you honking the horn a lot easier in this car than the, than the Chevy. Uh, the Model T has the horn in the engine compartment as well. It, as well as uh, thank you for joining us here at Cocker State Treasures. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, next time, we'll probably do a comparison video between the 28 Model A and in the garage, we've got a 26-27 two-door sedan Model T. 
so we'll get to see how the forest progressed from 26, 27 to the next year, to the 28, and see if there's any similarities between that and maybe the old 28 Chevy. Um, please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.